Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Breaking overnight, 14 Americans back in the U.S. test positive for the coronavirus after evacuating a cruise ship under quarantine. What health officials say about those who came back with the virus? And two candidates are vying for your vote in the upcoming primary election. One is a Republican and the other a Democrat. But their relationship with each other is unique. Aton Wallace has their story. And going back to the Wild West, thousands flood the Kern River Valley this weekend for Whiskey Flat Days. And there's still an opportunity for you to take part in the fun. Today is Monday, February 17th, 2020. I'm Alex Fisher along with Amber Frias this morning on this President's Day. A lot of folks have the day off. Yeah, that's uh, right. Hopefully uh, you are enjoying today off because it's going to be a beautiful day outside. Let's turn things over to Alyssa Carlson, who's in this morning, and she's got a look at your forecast. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, and I was just going to say, yes, Kevin and Maddie, both yes. having the day <laughs> off today. But uh, we are here with you this morning, and temperatures right now not too bad, 48 currently here in the city. Looking at 41 in Tehachapi, obviously it's been colder than that uh, recently at this hour. 37 in Lake Isabella, 45 in Fraser Park, and we are in the lower 40s from Wasco to Button Willow. We have seen a few clouds. Clouds pass on through and our skies will actually clear out as we head throughout the day today. So here's your out the door forecast by 11 a.m. 59 degrees and then at 5 o'clock in the valley 66 in the mountains today. Not quite as warm as yesterday either. We'll start out cool in the 40s but then we have 50s on the way. Much more on the work week ahead. But first look at traffic this morning with Alex. All right thanks Alyssa. You know what it's looking pretty good outside. Here's a look at the 99 at Airport Drive and it's looking pretty clear on that side of town. And it's looking pretty clear across Kern County for the most part. There is one thing that you need to know, though, is that if you're going to be using 24th Street uh, this morning, uh, keep in mind that there are uh, construction crews on site. They should be wrapping things up momentarily. But uh, if you are headed out the door within the next few minutes, keep in mind that uh, you could run into a detour if you were coming into the downtown area or leaving it. Uh, but other than that, it's all looking pretty good across Kern County. We'll have another check coming up in about 15 minutes. Your time now is 5.02, and while you were sleeping, hundreds of Americans returned back to the U.S. after traveling from Japan under quarantine. The evacuees are at a military base in California and Texas, where they face more quarantine. 14 people tested positive for the coronavirus and are currently at Travis Air Force Base in Fairfield. That's up in the Bay Area. While those 14 people tested positive, they did not show symptoms for several days, and that's why they were allowed on the plane. Another group of evacuees landed at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. Two planes carried nearly 400 Americans back to the United States last night alone. All passengers were given masks to wear on board those planes. Now, those passengers are required to undergo a two-week quarantine here in the U.S. And globally, the coronavirus has infected more than 71,000 people. Most of the cases are in mainland China. More than 1,700 people have died. This includes five deaths outside of China. Over the weekend, Europe saw its first coronavirus death. A Chinese tourist that tested positive for the virus died in France on Saturday. You might remember last week, Japan confirmed its first case of the virus. And this morning, Thailand, Japan and South Korea all announced new cases of the virus. 503 now in Bakersfield Police made a gang-related arrest after reports of a stolen vehicle. Officers say they went to the intersection of East Brundage Lane and Cottonwood Road for a stolen car. Police say the driver ran off when officers arrived, but BPD says they quickly found Andrew Chavez on Lotus Lane near the Casa Loma Apartments. That's where he was arrested. Police say Chavez had a loaded handgun and was later, later booked for gun possession and gang charges. Well, 17 News is your local election headquarters. We've told you Democratic Congressman T.J. Cox is going up against former three-term Republican Congressman David Valadeo in what could shape up to be a 2018 rematch. But there are two other candidates in this race that have a unique bond, even though they're running against each other. 17's Aton Wallace spoke with them and has their story. Those two candidates are Rocky and Ricky De La Fuente. No, the same last name is not a coincidence. They are father and son, one a Republican, the other a Democrat. 
So who are they? Well, we went down to their office in San Diego to ask them why they're running in this Central California district. And the question everyone has, are they for real? I'll take this one. Rocky De La Fuente and his son, Ricky De La Fuente, love chess and enjoy a friendly competition. Now you can get my pot with your queen. But now, dad, a Republican, and son, a Democrat, are competing for something else. The race for the 21st Congressional District, a district which includes Arvin to the south, parts of Bakersfield, segments of Tulare and Kings Counties, and even a sliver of Fresno County. All right, do your boxy rock. While the senior De La Fuente and his son technically are going up against each other, they say they entered the race to give voters an alternative to Republican David Valadeo and Democrat T.J. Cox. The system is broken because the people in Congress, all they care is about getting reelected. And I think anybody could do a better job than the current elected officials. And I want to get in because I feel like we need to deliver the results that our communities deserve. And we need action. No more talk. We need uh, Orgullo Latino. We need Orgullo Latina. We need to have role models for the Hispanic community. The 21st district is over 70% Hispanic. It's amazing that there was not Republican candidate that's Hispanic that's running, or there's not one Hispanic Democrat that's running. Both sides, Republican and Democrats, there's not one Hispanic, man or woman. We need to have more representation. So who are these candidates? Father and son were born in San Diego and live there today. The elder De La Fuente is a millionaire who earned his money in real estate development and through his ownership of dozens of car dealerships. His 30-year-old son describes himself as an entrepreneur who works in the family business. I'm there, my wife Katayun, Nancy Reagan, and Ronald Reagan. Politically, both have their eyes set on more than just the 21st district. I'm Rocky. Rocky De La Fuente. The elder De La Fuente, who ran for U.S. Senate in nine states during the 2018 election, is running for president as a Republican and as an American independent. He has qualified for the ballot in 17 states, including California. I hope you vote for me for president. I would like to basically get as much votes as I can to show that we're not united with Trump. And on the contrary, we need somebody with common decency and somebody that has... Uh, a little bit better personality. Previously, the younger De La Fuente ran for Congress in several states, including Florida. This time around, he's also running for a seat in Texas. Even so, both insist they care about the 21st. Right now, we are conducting this interview in beautiful San Diego in the 52nd Congressional District, some 30 congressional districts from the 21st, a four-hour drive away from the 21st. So what made you want to run for this race? I was looking to see where is most competitive. So when I was looking at the 21st Congressional District, I realized that there's a huge Hispanic majority. And the both uh, congressional candidates, T.J. Cox and David Valdeo, are neither Hispanic. So I felt that someone needs to run. I can run for any one of the 53 congressional districts. But more importantly, the 21st, it's shameful that we basically have a district that does not have a Hispanic or a His Hispana on the ballot. As for whether they believe they can win? Thank you, Ricky. Good game. They acknowledge it's no chess match, but they are optimistic. I really feel that it's, uh, the district is going to go Democrat, and it's going to basically be Mr. Cox or my son. Elect my son. He's Harvard-educated. He speaks 14 languages, eight fluently. He would make a beautiful, beautiful congressman. We need some young, rising leaders, and I think I can be that voice. A reminder, you do not have to live in the district to run. The Constitution requires only a member of Congress live in the state he or she represents. Now, the top two vote-getters in this race will advance to the general election this November. Meantime, primary election day is March 3rd. In Studio A, Tom Wallace, 17 News. And a reminder, if you haven't registered to vote yet, tomorrow is your last chance. You can register to vote online at registertovote.ca.gov. You must do it before midnight to participate in the election. You can also sign and return your paper registration forms at any available post office, public library, and election office. Or if you prefer to send it by mail, make sure your registration form is postmarked February 18th, that's tomorrow, in order for it to be accepted. And city offices are closed today in observance of President's Day. They will reopen again tomorrow. Trash will still be picked up and recycling centers will remain open.
Whiskey Flat Days wraps up in Kernville today. Every year people come from near and far to enjoy the four-day festival celebrating the town's western heritage. There's a parade, rodeo, music, dancing, races, contests, and a lot more. Today is the last day. For a full list of scheduled events, go to our website, kget.com. Yeah, I know a lot of people head up there for, uh, you know, the fun, the food. You're taking a look at some of the food right there. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of fun for the family to go up there and just kind of, ex you know, explore the Kern River Valley. Yeah, I didn't get to go this year, but I actually went for the first time last year, and it was a lot, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It is a lot yeah. of fun. And there's so much to do up there. So if you don't have any plans today, uh, consider going up to Whiskey yeah. Flat Days. And it's beautiful up there, it too. Is, it is gorgeous. <laughs> All right, 510 now and still to come, up in flames. A garage catches fire and is destroyed over the weekend. We'll tell you more about the fire that broke out at an oil deal home when we come back. Welcome back. It is President's Day, and that means a lot of people have the day off. So some things that typically happen today will be back to normal tomorrow. The Kern Fair Board was scheduled to meet today, but it will hold its meeting tomorrow. The meeting starts at 5 p.m. in the Administrative Office Boardroom. That's located at 1142 South P Street. You can find a copy of the agenda online. You can expect some detours and possible delays if you're going to be driving through town at night. The on-ramp from Ming Avenue to northbound State Route 99 will be closed at night starting tomorrow. The closure is due to construction work in the area and it is expected to open again on Thursday. Closures are expected to happen between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. each night. As always, make sure to slow down and watch for construction workers and equipment and plan ahead to avoid delays. The search continues for an at-risk man who went missing in central Bakersfield. 57-year-old Jose Perez Munoz was last seen in the 1200 block of 8th Street around 9 on Saturday night. According to police, he is described as a 5'10 Hispanic man who weighs 176 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black jacket, black pants, and was in a wheelchair. If you have any more information, call police at 327-7111. Making news around town, a fire injures one man and destroys the garage of a home in Oildale. Kern County firefighters say they received several calls about a garage on fire on Iris Street near Vine Avenue just after noon yesterday. When crews arrived, they found the garage engulfed in flames and smoke. Plus, they say there was a power pole involved, causing added danger. We always recommend people, um, you know, have smoke detectors installed in their homes and make sure they're working and seal monitors, things like that. A man had minor burns from the fire but did not need to go to the hospital. First responders were able to contain the fire to the garage, but parts of the home ends had smoke damage. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Today marks a celebration of random acts of kindness and local businesses are finding ways to give back. Bakersfield's Texas Roadhouse management team is giving back to the community by volunteering in town. Their mission is to spread some joy and help others. To participate in the giving celebration, make sure to stop by today from 10 a.m. until noon. It's happening at the Bakersfield Homeless Mission on E816 East 21st Street. Well, you help out and you get a nice lunch. Yeah, it's a good day. <laughs> All right, the NBA All-Star Game was last night and still to come. We'll tell you who won. Plus how players and fans alike honored Kobe Bryant. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back. It's 525 on this Monday morning. Sprint and T-Mobile are on the cusp of merging. The New York Attorney General says she won't appeal after losing a case aimed at stopping the deal. New York and a dozen other states sued to stop the $26 billion merger. They said it would hurt consumers by reducing competition. U.S. District Court Judge Victor Marrero ruled against them this month. New York Attorney General Leticia James says she won't appeal that ruling. California's Attorney General is still considering the options, but the merger now appears likely. And a record-breaking number of Americans have saved up $1 million in their retirement accounts. This is according to a Fidelity. A uh, Fidelity study, a record 441,000 IRA or 401k accounts the firm manages had balances of $1 million. But why? Likely record-breaking markets and retirement savings. Still, retirement millionaires are relatively rare and a huge segment of baby boomers are below the much more modest median account of just $70,000.
Changes have been made that could affect a profound impact on whether you can get a loan to buy a house, car, or another big ticket item. Details from NBC's Chris Clackham. Suffice it to say, your FICO credit score is one of the most important numbers in your financial life. This is used in about 90% of lending decisions. It's going to determine whether or not you get that loan or line of credit in the first place, and if you do, the interest rate you'll pay. But now, the way your FICO score is determined has changed to what they call trended data. An example, if it's just one month out of 12 where your spending is well above normal. Could be a vacation, could be holiday shopping, back to school shopping. Then it's not going to hurt your credit rating. But fall behind paying your bills three or four months in a row, get ready to pay more. Your debt's creeping up, you're starting to fall behind on your bills. Trended data is going to penalize somebody like that. And according to CreditCard.com's Ted Rossman, you'll pay a lot more. I mean, even on a $200,000 mortgage, we could be talking a difference of $25,000 over 30 years. He says the best way to avoid a hit from the changes, pay your bills on time. Chris Clackham, NBC News.